All right, you go to LA, you're bound to see at least like one out of 10 people walking down the street drinking a bottle of kombucha. Or you can be like Lindsay Lohan and claim that that's the reason your life's a mess. So look, I don't really know where to start with kombucha. It's interesting in theory, but I want to be able to take a look at evidence-based nutrition, evidence-based like stuff to really determine what's better, kefir or kombucha. Like what's going on here? Well, kefir obviously is dairy based. Okay. It's like a kind of a liquidy, creamy yogurt, right? It's drinkable yogurt. Whereas kombucha is made from water and what's called a SCOBY, a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast that they add into water and some sugar to allow it to ferment. Makes sense, right? Okay. Well, let's take a look at the research with kefir. And in order to make this like a complete video, I'm actually going to talk about yogurt and kefir because they're very similar. And I want you to know the difference between the two. And then I'll talk about the kombucha piece. Okay. So with yogurt, okay, dairy based foods that are fermented are the only foods that can actually be considered probiotic right now. Okay. So that means that they're the only foods that have clinical evidence demonstrating it can change the microbiome. Now that doesn't mean that consuming something that's a non-dairy form of a fermented food is bad. And I've covered that in other videos, but I want to do a side by side here. But before I get into the deep dive after this video, check out Thrive Market. They're today's video sponsor. They're an online membership based grocery store. So they make it so that you can log on, you can find your foods. You can even find fermented foods if you wanted to anything you really like. You can sort by keto, you can sort by vegetarian, by vegan, all this stuff, gluten free, and then you just get it delivered right to your doorstep. So whatever it is you're looking for, you can sort for it and find it. And then it gets delivered, makes life super easy. At least it does for me. So they're a huge sponsor of this channel. They have been for years and there's a 25% off discount link. So you use that link at 25% off plus get a free gift. So make sure you check them out after this video. So the international journal of food microbiology demonstrated that having one serving of a lactobacillus fortified yogurt for 20 days made a pretty significant impact when it came down to the level of lactobacillus within the gut. Now lactobacillus is a very important bacteria. Okay. is what is called a lactic acid producing bacteria. These lactic acid producing bacteria can sort of have a cascade of positive effects. They can affect levels of proanthocyanins, which can affect sort of how many antioxidants we make in our body. Long story short, they have a long tail effect on the body. It's the kind of bacteria we really want to promote. Now, additionally, a study that was published in the journal Pharma Nutrition demonstrated that four weeks of yogurt consumption led to a pretty significant increase once again in lactobacillus and bifidobacterium with no change in the actual gut ecosystem negatively. So it didn't like alter things. A lot of times if you have one species coming in and dominating, it's like throwing a wolf in a pen of squirrels. It throws off like the ecosystem where now there's less squirrels and things like that. Didn't seem to disrupt that, which is powerful, right? We want more gut diversity without negative impact on the gut ecosystem. So now you understand the yogurt side. Now what makes kefir different? Kefir is a more gut tolerant version of yogurt. Okay. Now kefir is unique because it's using non lactose fermenting yeast and lactose fermenting yeast. So two different kinds of compounds, two different kinds of cultures that are coming in, hitting it from a different angle. So it's like almost enhanced yogurt. Now kefir contains specific bacteria that increases the levels of galactosidase. So galactosidase producing bacteria, galactosidase hydrolyzes lactose. Okay. That means that there's less lactose in kefir than there is in yogurt, which for people that have a sensitive gut could be very, very powerful. Okay. So a 60% increase in galactosidase in kefir over yogurt leading to about a 30% less level of lactose in kefir versus yogurt. So if you're really trying to restore your gut, yeah, it might make more sense to go the kefir route. Now what's cool is there's a study published in the journal of medicine and food that found that subjects that consumed 500 milliliters of kefir versus subjects that consumed 250 milliliters of milk ended up having a better result when it came down to H pylori eradication. Now with this study, they were also utilizing antibiotics in both groups. So it was kind of an adjunct to, but the 78% increase in eradication with the kefir group versus a 50% eradication in the milk group, showing that kefir did play a role in restoring sort of that balance in the ecosystem within the gut. So now we take a look at kombucha. Now, we have to wonder if the reason that these dairy based like fermented foods are doing good because they have milk sugars and more like food and substance to feed on versus like a starter culture or a SCOBY put into water where they're just having to add sugar. Here's the interesting thing. 
Kombucha seems to have decent effects in in vitro studies. Now, when it comes down to the in vitro studies, they're antimicrobial effects. Okay, so we're noticing that it seems to be inhibiting like pathogenic bacteria in in vitro. But the pathogenic bacteria like inhibition very likely couldn't be translated in vivo, couldn't necessarily happen in humans. The fact that like you can put kombucha into a petri dish and it has an antipathogenic effect, that's pretty cool, but we just don't know if that's gonna work in humans. So are there really any clinical studies with humans? No, the research is pretty bleak. Now, that may be because maybe it doesn't work and the stuff's not getting published, or it could be because it's very hard to do and doesn't have the funding that, say, the dairy industry has to help support some of these things. When you look at the compounds of kombucha, obviously there's different forms of SCOBY, but generally it's going to have lactic acid producing bacteria and also acetic acid producing bacteria, which means just like kefir, you're coming at it from both angles, but the sustainability is the issue. Is it going to survive? Because usually what they have to do is they have to add sugar into kombucha to allow it to sustain life and keep the bacteria happy. So no real evidence there. So when you're looking at apples to apples, kefir is going to be better than kombucha, especially when you factor in the sugar content, right? Because most of the sugar in milk is going to be lactose. And if you're breaking down the lactose by having the galactosidase that is hydrolyzing it, then maybe you are having less of the actual sugar that's going to have a negative metabolic impact. Whereas most kombuchas that are on the shelf are going to be ones that are going to eh, still have a fair bit of sugar, like 20, 25 grams in some of them. Then when you look at one wild card that's called water kefir, okay, that's usually on the shelf next to kombucha, that could be an interesting one because water kefir is utilizing the cultures that normally be used in kefir with like regular dairy kefir, but applying it to water. So that's the one that really doesn't have a lot of research yet, but could be promising if we can apply the same kind of benefits that we potentially get from kefir. So in the order of how they work best, seems to be yogurt with the most research, kefir with a lot of research, but also being better for people that are lactose intolerant or sensitive. Then we seem to have water kefir, which is a question mark with very little research, but we can elucidate that it's good. And then kombucha with very little research whatsoever. So instead of Lindsay Lohan driving her car, drinking a kombucha, next time she should just eat a yogurt. See you tomorrow.